So sometimes in other situation, you can get thyroid examination. So it can be either hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. If it is a hyperthyroid, then definitely there will be an adolescent girl, most commonly, as we know. Or if it is a hypothyroid, then you may find another maybe another girl or maybe a boy. But most common, commonly this is seen in female or girls. So you will if you see the girl and if you see that she is obese or she if she is very tall, lean, thin, hmm? and if you see the eye signs in first presentation, then you should suspect that this is hyper or hypothyroidism. So that is usually seen in the first look so we will go step by step how to do the examination in exam so when you enter you are sitting outside for four minutes and then you are given a in clinical examination nothing will be given to you only a plain paper blank sheet and a pencil will be with you you may have a wristwatch which should be over the best vest you cannot wear the wristwatch in the uh, wrist second thing apron is not compulsory but if you wear it's okay if you don't wear it's okay so stethoscope is very important so i suggest everyone that you bring take your own stethoscope sometimes if you forget your stethoscope to bring then they will provide you another stethoscope and that may not be of good quality so and you may not be comfortable with that stethoscope to hear the murmurs or brewery all so always carry your own stethoscope hmm? and that should not be no no new means you are using that stethoscope from last couple of months or like that. Mm -hmm. So in others, there are so many cases. Out of that, one most common case is thyroid, which can be found everywhere in every country, every situation, every area. Right. So we will go for the examination for hypo and hyper both. So first, as I said, hypo, uh, obese, and sh may sometimes maybe short, right? And if it is hyper, then she may be tall. Will most probably will be tall and look will be anxious eh? and eye signs is easily visible and if you look at the neck also then you can see some swelling in the neck also as well so when you enter after four minutes uh, you don't know what is the case once you enter in the uh, room your command will be given by the examiner and that will be included in nine minutes eh? so once you enter in your room your time starts so he will give you the command so this is the child please do a thyroid examination on him so he has to tell you specifically thyroid examination if he doesn't say just like do the examination so you won't under, you won't understand this is a thyroid examination so he has to say uh, in the command that please do the thyroid examination or sometimes maybe neck examination because the neck, neck lump is there so if he can say that there is a swelling in the neck and do the relevant examination so in direct way they can tell you the thyroid examination so you are I request everyone to get when you are not working. Dr. Anjan, you are... Thank you. Okay, so examiner has given you the command. At the same time, you are washing your hands. Don't forget to wash your hands. Then you are uh, looking at the parents and the child. So you need to greet to the introduction. So first you say, hello, this is Dr. Pankaj, one of the child doctor or teen dog whatever what is the age according to the age you have to tell to the parent uh, parents right so it's for example this is a child so you will be i am a child doctor in the hospital if it is a teen or you are talking to the teenager then you cannot say like i am a child doctor then she will be you often that right so in that case you can say i am one of the doctor in the hospital like this so you mention whatever you are don't say pediatric registrar I am because this is, this is a layman, right? So when you say pediatric registrar, when you are doing communication with the medical student, that time you must say I am a pediatric registrar. But if it is a uh, layman or the patient, then you must not say pediatric registrar. That is very important. And when you say your name, don't say full name. Or uh, First name is okay, like Dr. Pankaj. Uh, no need to tell the full name. Uh, after that, give a smile. At the same time, you are washing your hands and introduction. So, then greeting, good morning, good evening, whatever. You are. Sometimes it is a.m., p.m. So, you have to be very careful. Sometimes the candidate is in stress and it is afternoon and you are saying good morning. Though good morning is okay when you first time in the day. But we don't know who is the examiner or what is his level or what he thinks. Dr. Pomindo, sorry, please, can you mute yourself? 
I request everyone to check your mic. Eh? Oh, window. So, give a smile. You should be very smiley during the examination. No, all the stations, not only this station, everywhere you have to be smiling and talkative. All time you should talk, you should make a habit of talking every time. And so this practice cannot come directly in the exam. You have to develop your habit uh, from today onwards. Dr. Pomendo, I requested you to mute yourself, but you could not. Actually, actually, this is the common rule and we must follow that, that we should be muted. We should check our mic because it will disturb everyone, right? Okay, so what I said, you have to be talkative. So you are done right now. You are talking to the parents. You're giving a smile and saying, this is Dr. Pankaj, one of the child doctor in the hospital. Suppose a child is seven, eight years old. And I would like to examine the name. You should name the child, right? You should know you, you cannot say like, I will examine your son or child. Whatever name was given by the exam, you have to tell the name. And they will say, is that okay to you? Yeah, so you sh you say thank you. And then move towards the child and give again big smile to the child and say, hello, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, then no need to say this is Dr. Pankaj again. So then how oh, you are a lovely boy, your shirt is very good or something like that. So you need to make a six sentence for a female child or for a male child. So this should be there. So shirt is very good for the boy. And if female, you could smile like this. If she is smiling, definitely in most of the cases, the child will be smiling. So you need to fix your statement. And at the same time, you are doing the inspection, right? Looking at the child and the surrounding, right? So this is called first look. So you're looking at child that he is in distress or comfortable. So this is habit because you know, for, there are four clinical stations. All the in all the four clinical stations, initial start one or two minutes same. So that will be useful for you in every station. So here you are looking at the child and while you are talking to the parents also, the time you are looking at the child means not looking at the child exactly, but you are keeping in mind what this diagnosis can be. So now you are talking to the child and uh, if it is, for example, MSK station or any other station where you are touching the child very deliberately, most of the time you have to touch. So you can say that child is quite grown up that I would do the some examination. If you find any pain or difficulty, let me know, please. I will uh, stop or don't say stop or let me know. So that is a good idea. And then start your exam looking. Out. So first look, so inspection you are doing. So you see the, what is the whether the child is obese or not whether distress is there or not, whether not in this station, but other stations, maybe child is dysmorphic, right? Maybe genetic syndrome. So you need to check over the face, like Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, Nunnan syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome, Kumarpan syndrome, Russell Silver syndrome, blah, blah. Yeah. And you must identify the child uh, through the syndrome, right? Like William syndrome, where wide smile will be there, wide mouth will be there. Hmm. Uh, so, see, I, I needed to mute someone, so I lost my flow for a second. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what, what is the funda, common funda for all the session? 4D MS. Hmm? And then 4D, uh, 4D MS. So, this will be used in almost all the sessions. No need to, uh, suppose in thyroid, there is no dysmorphic feature. So no need to use 4D, that may be 3D, right? So di dimensions, height, weight, and uh, height, weight, you can uh, see, or if it is required in the station, you can ask to the examiner, I would like to measure his height or weight. Aku follow juga yang ada macam lecturer Indian buat MRCPTH punya class. Yeah, ha-ha. Aku tengok juga lah, MRCPTH clinical dia. No. Yeah. See, I will do that so that everybody should understand. Okay. So, uh, dimensions, dysmorphic features, distress, and devices. So, for example, in thyroid case, what may be the devices? Devices mean whatever is the surrounding. So, you say sometimes there may be a what can be there in the surroundings? Anyone can open up the mic and one person and tell me what you will see in the surroundings in a thyroid examination. Yes. Thyroid medicines. Very good. Excellent. 
Oh, nice. I was thinking that nobody will tell this. Good, very good. Hearing, hearing aid. Sorry? Hearing aid. Hearing aid, okay. That can be, yes. That, is, that, is, that is probably because of Pendred syndrome. Pendred syndrome, yes. So that we will see, yes, if there is a hearing problem along with thyroid. Very good, excellent. What else you would like to see? Very important. Uh, Canula. Sorry? Canula. 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 Yeah. Canula will not be there for thyroid at least. So glass of water, right? Glass of water and then paper. Paper also. Yes, excellent. So, glass of water. Paper is for tremors. So in, uh, I tell you a very interesting uh, story or point. In one exam, it was a real story. Uh, in one station, thyroid was there and examiner asked the candidate, Sir, do you need a glass of water? He said yes. And then examiner gave the glass of water and he drank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So, this was very funny. So, you should be very careful. I mean, even hammer also, sir. Hammer also. Hammer is also could be de a, a surrounding device. Yes, hammer can be there, but it won't be there. Only glass of water and medicines. These are the yeah, exactly. things in the thyroid. But there are so many other things which we think then it will be a different thing, right? This is not a super specialist uh, exam. So just add uh -huh. glass of water and that paper. To show, I mean, plain paper. And another thing you said, medicines. Now... You are doing the M, M for mentality. So if it is a severe hypo, hypothyroidism and from long standing hypothyroidism, then there may be some mental problems, right? So child may be a little bit uh, uh, submental. Then as for speech, speech is not required here. And vitals are very important here, right? So we will see as we'll do general physical examinations. So what vitals we have to check. So this is the initial. Sorry, Sorry. Hmm? Sorry speech. Uh... A speech like horses of voice could be in a thyroid. Yes, excellent. Very good. So if you see a scar over the neck during inspection, that we are coming to that during inspection palpation. So yeah. I was thinking that I will tell you there. So when we do inspection local examination, that time we will see this. So now uh, you are doing everything you've done. It should be done within a minute. Everything which I mentioned till now should be finished within a minute and if you are a perfect clinician you can you can finish it in 30 seconds 20 seconds because this should be your second nature second habit so now you are asking the child to suppose child is sitting on the couch and you are asking the child to spread both the hands and look at the palm and the dorsum of the hands so in the palm you see is there any erythema is there not hyperemia erythema so suppose this is hyperthyroidism the erythema may be there the palm may be very moist right if it is a hypo then it can be dry palm then you what else you will see you will see in the uh, uh, hands hot or cold so if you touch his hand definitely you will touch the hand so you can see that these are the hot or cold if it is hot then definitely hyperthyroidism if it is cold then you are going towards the hypo uh, though it is very clear from the start if i look first look that this is hypo or hyper it will be very clear to you uh, then you say the dorsum the hand also you can see the dry skin Sometimes clubbing is also seen if it is long standing gas. Uh, that one, then you have to check the pulse. Pulse, it is not like CVS examination that you will check bilaterally. Here, you need to check only one side. So, radial pulse, you can put your hand and just uh, most uh, many candidates will see the rest to watch to count the pulse. But me, I never did like this. I just put my hand, uh, fingers, just like a show for five, six seconds and then multiply with the 10. So, for example, sometimes it is 8. 8 into 10 is 80. So, according to age. So, you can tell to the examiner, it is around 70 to 80, 80 to 90, just a range. No need to say this is 72 or 82, 85 like this. Uh, then, pulse you have checked. So, pulse, what will give you? If pulse is, uh, why I am telling from my side? Because I want to, otherwise it will take a lot of time today. So, if the hypothyroid, I mean, pulse is uh, tachycardic, child is tachycardic, then you are going towards hyperthyroidism. If it is bradycardic, then going towards the hypothyroidism. If here, here some people say that uh, we need to check the water hammer pulse. Water hammer pulse is also seen in hyperthyroidism. So, if it is a hyperthyroidism, you should check the water hammer pulse. So, you know how to check water hammer pulse. You just hold the hand of the child with your palm. So in circle, you, your palm is totally covering the hand of the child at the radial artery and just lift in the air, right? So that will give gush of water. If it is there, then though it is very difficult. If you have seen 10 to 15 patients, 20 patients of same water marble, then it will be there. 
but if you want to make a show in hyperthyroidism then this is the best way so you just lift and leave it so this is how the exam is looking that you know the technique after this uh, uh, you have to go up and we are looking for the blood pressure very important don't forget here pulse and then blood pressure definitely right we are going to the elbow elbow what we check just above the elbow uh blood pressure so you just offer to the examiner that i would like to check blood pressure so examiner will say yes or no sometimes very rarely they can offer you to check the blood pressure if it is available in the room and if you are given the chance to check the blood pressure you must be thorough in that how to check blood pressure if you are not then you are gone then blood pressure what we are looking blood pressure white blood pulse pressure like systolic diastolic big gap may be there in hyperthyroidism right if it is hypo then i don't know but i think it should be low blood pressure most probably uh then you go up and check if the child is about 10 years 9 or 10 years then you should must check about the pubertal signs like axillary hair so in if it is a male child or a boy and then definitely he will be exposed on the upper side of the upper, upper half of the body so you can easily see that whether axillary hairs or not if it is a female child then you should be modest and you need to just inform to the examiner i would like to check the pubertal signs like axillary hairs just tell to the examiner and then he will say no need and go on now you are going to the head so head what you will see if we should start from top bottom at uh, sorry top top of the head so if it is a autoimmune thyroid condition just like uh, Graves disease or something Hashimoto then you should see the alopecia is there an alopecia because you have condition so alopecia is there or not along with that when you're choking looking at the child you should be careful about the wet leg also if there is a wet leg over the face or the neck or of the hands so that should be in mind so on the head you are looking for the alopecia then you are coming to the face face what you will see you are if it is a very long standing case of hypothyroidism then sometimes not always then in the child is not taking treatment then later one third of the eyebrows may be lost but in our countries or in our cases like uk asia i i don't think you will find these cases but if he asks or someone asks in the exam or somewhere maybe in video station then you should know that the lateral one third of the eyebrows may be lost then now we are looking at the eyes right so eye signs are very very important in thyroid so there are three four signs are there in eyes one is uh what we call proptosis right so you see eyes are coming out so you check the proptosis from three sides right so from the right side then from the above the head and then from the left side so you stand on the right side of the child and see whether this is eyeball is coming out so it is coming out from the it is crossing the nasal bridge or not means when you see from the right side you can see eyeball only or you can see the nasal bridge if you can see only eyeball no nasal bridge is visible it means this is the exophthalmos right and the same thing you do from the above above head so above head you ask the child a uh, uh, child or the patient to look little up because there are a lot of hairs in front of the forehead right so you are not visible uh, able to uh, see the eyes so in that case you ask the child to little will extend the neck and then you can see the eyes so if you can see eyeball uh, from the above then it is again exophthalmos and uh, then you will go to the left side and we'll see so from three sides you have to see this this proptosis then uh, uh, this is what we call uh, lid uh, what is the name of that is lid retraction so when you see from the front of the child see lid retraction means what so this is natural i mean natural means in the patient it is automatically there is no need to tear, to do any maneuver so here you see this is the eye and this is the pupil and you see eyelids are there and you can see this conjectiva here sclera wide sclera here and here so wide uh, eyes are wide open and wide conjectiva sorry i forgot to take the images i thought earlier that i will download some images last minute i forgot so you i think you understood this is white sclera will be there so this is called lid retraction lid is retracted upwards or downwards now what is the lid lag so when you are sitting in front of the child and you are asking the child to look up and then immediately you are saying look down so when child is looking down then you see 
the upper eyelid is not moving much and the, this eyeball has gone downwards for upper eyelid or no? is not is coming very slowly down so this is called lid leg so upper eyelid is lagging with the speed of the eyeball so this is called lid leg then third is uh, sorry first of proptosis second as i say lid retraction lid leg now you have to see ophthalmoplegia that is called external ophthalmoplegia so what happens when the eye muscles are weak so what we do we do h shape test right you know h shape we we do in cranial examination h so you put your finger uh, in front of the child in midway uh, i think it is uh, around uh, half meter or something so you just move your uh, finger like this as you know in cranial like this then this then here 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 like this these are the edge shape movements of the eyes so here what are you looking you are looking for the external ophthalmoplegia so you want to see suppose child is moving his head first we will instruct him not to move head but if child has to move the head towards to to look your finger like this so he is moving his head it means his eye muscles are weak that's why he is moving head if eye muscles are not weak he will not move his head only he will he will he will, he will move his eyeball only towards this direction that direction all the direction so this is the edge test we have to perform this is along with that you have to do local examination inspection of the eyes also suppose because there is hyperthyroid one then what may be there exposure keratitis may be there because as I, as I said this is widely open eyes right so you need to check exposure keratitis so you, though it is very difficult for you without slip slit lamp examination but if the child is blinking too much okay or some maybe some other clues which you can find and you can suspect or you can trail to the examiner and that i would like to check the exposure for exposure keratitis okay so this was about the eye signs now uh, yeah before that uh, i missed one thing when we were checking the hands that time we should uh, tremors we should check that i missed so we will ask the child to spread both the hands and on the dorsum of the hands we will put the two papers in both the hands dorsum of the hands and then he will spread bo both the hands are uh, fully extended position and then you see a tremors if the paper is moving then it is a tremors right so there are fine tremors so that i missed and i just uh, now telling you now after eyes yes he said pendant syndrome then you should just look at the ears if there is any hearing yet so that will be visible of course then we will come to the neck so now neck we will do the we will do the local examination right local means systemic examination. what we saw either you can say systemic or you can say local examination so let me clear this so suppose this is the neck okay so what you do first you have to do inspection right inspection of the neck then you will do palpation percussion and auscultation so the same way we do in the respiratory system right so this is like respiratory system so inspection what we will do we will look at the neck so here when you look at the neck you have to tell to the child to extend the neck little bit so he if he extend the neck then only you will be able to see the swelling so 10 to 20 to 30 degree of extension of the neck is required here and we when he extend you see the side shape of the swelling right thyroid swelling side shape hmm? and uh, then uh, you see the scar mark is there any scar mark of surgery maybe thyroidectomy done or partial or total thyroid right so you need to do so in that case when you are talking to the child that time as he dr gulati mentioned you see the hoarseness of the voice because recurrent laryngeal nerve may be injured right or left side uh, during surgery so that's why we see the hoarseness of the voice hmm? even if the hypo long strain hypothyroidism then also voice will be changed so that side shape symmetry and nodules also sometimes visible from the outside scar you have to see any skin problem here you have to see so this is the inspection and whether this mass is very large mild means i mean small moderate or very large size so that is all inspection then palpation so you have to go behind the child you are standing behind the child and you are you you have to put your both the four fingers right four fingers this side of the thyroid and on the right side of the thyroid also so now you what you're doing you are you are behind your right hand is on the this side right your right hand is this side your left hand is this side four fingers are here like this four fingers are there 
So you push from this side to this side. Okay. You are pushing the gland and from the left hand of you, yeah, your left hand, you will palpate this. So when you push and then palpate from the left hand, I am talking the uh, your left hand. So you can palpate whether this is a nodular or diffuse uh, swelling is there, how much big size or not. Same way you will do on the right side. So your left hand, you will push this side, the gland, and then your right hand will palpate this. So what you will do, the what you will check in, oh, so, sorry, sorry, inspection, do things we missed that uh, you have to do swallow test, right? So swallowing test you have to do and water test. So during this, you have to give swelling. So you need to give the glass of water and he has to drink the glass of uh, two, two, one or two sips and then you will see whether this is moving or not. If right now you do swallowing and you put your finger on the neck or the thyroid gland, you will see it moving. So you can do yourself. So that is the room. Swallowing is, if it moves during swallowing, it means it is a thyroid gland. If it doesn't move, then you have to ask the child to protrude the tongue, tongue out. Then you see whether the swelling is moving or not. If you uh, protrude the tongue and it's moving, then it is thyroglossal dig. Thyro means thyroid, glossal means tongue. So when tongue is moving and this uh, there is a duct. For example, there is a connection between the thyroid and the tongue. So that's why it's called duct, thyroglossal duct. So when tongue is protruded out, it will move. So this test you have to do during inspection and palpation both. Mm, this following test. So we did inspection. Then palpation we are doing from behind. And then what other things we will do? During palpation you will see the warm. This skin is warm or not over the gland or hot. Then you have to palpate the all the glands of the neck. Mm, so the cervical limb nodes and then uh, this uh, submandibular limb nodes. So from all the areas you have to search to the limb nodes. If they are enlarged, then what is the meaning of this? So this child may have malignancy. Hmm? So malignancy of the thyroid. So that you have to do from back palpation and checking for the thyroid and this uh, sorry thyroid gland and this. So after this palpation, you have to measure if there is a swelling. Then you have to come to the right side of the child and you have to measure the size of the thyroid gland. So usually we see butterfly shape is there, right? like this this is normal shape if it is enlarged so you have to measure this transverse and this vertical also so the in measuring tab will be there if not then you should offer to the examiner ask the examiner i would do i would like to measure the thyroid gland its dimensions to the tab measuring tab he said no need then it's okay but if he doesn't say anything and he provides then you have to measure so what is the normal size of the thyroid gland in children it is 1.5 centimeter uh, in the transverse, like horizontal, 1.5 centimeter. You can remember like half inch. Yeah? 1.55 centimeter is like this. This is like 3 centimeter. Am I right? So, I think this is like this. This is 1.5 or this is 3. Or it may be vice versa. I don't remember exactly. So, 3 centimeter. So, half inch and 1 inch. Okay. So, one dimension is half inch, 1 inch, uh, 1 inch. So that you have to remember that is normal. If it is enlarged, then you have to see. Apart from this palpation done, then not palpation done, you have to check the trachea also here. So you have to, when you are on the right side, you have to palpate the trachea at the just above the sternum. Uh, so trachea sometimes because of the swelling or mass, trachea is shifted to one or two sides. So that's why we need to check the trachea. So the tracheal palpation is seen in two conditions, two, two systems. One is the thyroid and another way is the respiratory system. If you forget the trachea palpation, then you will lose one mark, especially in respiratory system. Here, if the examiner will also forget, then it's okay. But this is the ideal way you have to check the trachea, whether it's shifted or not, palpation. Then we are going for the percussion, right? So percuss, you have to do, sometimes this gland is extended below the sternum, right? This is many of sternum. So sometimes this gland is extended, so you will percuss here only, not on the gland, not to the percussion of the gland, here only for the retrosternal extension. If there is a dullness, it means the gland has gone down. If there is a resonant knot, a normal knot, then you this is not, but this is a part of show, you have to do it. So this is percussion. Percussion will require only this thing. Then auscultation. Auscultation, how to do? So this slightly extended neck. And the child ask the child to deep breathe in. So he will do breathe in. 
then you put your stethoscope on four areas four lobes like here here when he is holding the breath you have to auscultate so during holding the breath you will see there is brewing brewing means flow of the blood if there is a hyperdynamic flow then you will listen some blood is flowing through the pipe like this so that brewing though this is not seen in the exam or anywhere but you have to show to the examiner that I know how to take the brew. So first, many candidates do just directly put the stethoscope and finish. No, you have to ask the child to hold deep breathe in and long breath and then hold it and then check. And then you can say slowly release after auscultation. So that is the another thing. Uh, so this was the local examination or systemic, whatever you say. Systemic examination for the for occultation of brewing, four areas? Yes, here, here, and here. Actually, I'm not seeing the picture. Okay, okay, this one. Brui, brui, here, in the neck. I made this thyroid separately. Okay, so mm. here on neck only, you will put the status of four places and just show. Hmm? So, though, okay. it's okay. just impossible to listen brui, but you have to show to the examiner, I know this thing. Okay. Okay. So this meeting will end in three minutes, and with once we will rejoin the same meeting, same link. Hmm? So no worries. Apart from this, other other things like associations, like plus, what else you will see in the child? So what are the other things you would like to check? Here you will see the my proximal myopathy is there or not? Ankle reflexes are there or not? So reflexes you can see you can do in the upper limb, lower limb, or wherever. Whether you want to do supinator, biceps, or other jugs. But ideally, we do first preferred is ankle reflex because that is the most sensitive reflex. So you ask the child. <laughs> you ask the child to stand and then put the knee joint and the leg. I mean leg, shin on the chair. So your uh, foot is beyond the chair, beyond the border of the chair, and then you are doing with the this checking the reflex with the hammer. So if it is just slowly relaxing. Then you see this is a hypothyroidism, right? So that is also again part of show. How to check proximal myopathy? So you ask the child to sit on the chair and both the hands spreading in, the, in front of you and then stand up. Without using the hands, you have to stand up. If he is able to stand up very easily, then there is a no proximal myopathy in the hip joint, right? For the upper joint, you have to ask whether he is able to come buttoning and buttoning. That is a theory thing. So that's why we do in the lower limb only. So better you do ankle jerk and the uh, proximal myopathy of the lower limb so ask him to stand up both the hands spreading in front of you so this is proximal myopathy then apart from this you have to do auscultation of the heart sometimes you know hyperthyroid if it is a hyperthyroidism you have to do auscultation sometimes you can see the uh, palpitation or i mean palpitation is tachycardia or patient sometimes complaining i have palpitation so that's why just put your stethoscope on the heart also when you are doing this brui at the same time you put on the heart apex and finish it then you have to go to the lower limb so lower limb what will you examine so first of all you will examine the pretibial myxedema pretibial myxedema so in the legs suppose this is the leg this is the ankle so you will see the press here both the side eh, bilaterally and see whether this child is having pretibial myxedema or not so that is another show apart from this you have to uh, Tell to the examiner at the end, in order to complete my exam, I would like to check, suppose blood pressure was missed, then you have to offer that I will check the blood pressure. I would plot the child on the group appropriate growth chart. Then you can say puberty, I will stage the puberty, if it is an adolescent girl. Apart from this, you have to see, as I said, in inspection, you had seen alopecia, then vitiligo, right? Sometimes you have to see hyperpigmentation, like sometimes Addison's disease, also autoimmune condition. So once you have done all these things, after that, you have to ask a few questions to them before this even. Uh, in order to complete, you say, before that, you have to take permission from the examiner that I would like to ask few questions. So few questions like whether you like hot or uh, this cold weather, constipation, diarrhea, whether you're sleepy or not, whether your appetite is good or not, whether you're putting on the weight or not. So all these questions 